you remember getting an ounce sheet? No, I remember. Why are you stealing other people? <laughs> Go get one. <laughs> So, no, uh, today we're going to go through a lot of terms that you may have heard of before, but we're going to be utilizing a lot of them throughout the year. Uh, it's important that you have this understanding of how we're going to use them, how they apply uh, from labs to tests, everything else. So, we're done, right, ladies? Are we done? We're done, right? We're good? Okay, please. We are in, you're in the treat today. All right, I thought we were done. We're done? All right, we're done. Okay, good. All right, so um, it's, your, it's very important for you to make sure that you uh, have the definitions that I already typed uh, associated with the words that will have uh, come up for you, okay? So um, without further ado, we're going to get going right away. Again, you can tell we have a lot of things that are going to be happening uh, in here. So um, let's start off right in the beginning. So there's a flow chart. You don't have to have the flow chart necessarily memorized, but what it is, it's going to help us classify matter. Okay. So I guess what we need to ask ourselves, what is matter? And the reason why we're going to talk about this, even though I guarantee you've talked about this in middle school and everything else, is that when we do a reaction, what is actually interacting? What actually reacted and what is it? Because a lot of us make that mistake. So I'm going to give you a definition right on top of it. And I would definitely write it right here. So anything with mass and volume. So when I have a reaction and I'm using a Bunsen burner or a flame like this little blowtorch, a lot of people will answer like, well, what reacted? Well, that chemical reacted with the fire. So then I guess I'd have to ask you, does this flame have mass and does it take out space? Like, does it have volume? I don't know. So let, let's talk about what those mean. To have mass, eloquent uh, definition, it's the amount of stuff you have. Okay? A lot of us get confused. You go up to the moon, yeah, but you lose, you have less weight on the moon. That's dependent on gravity. You don't go up to the moon and you look to your right and your arm's gone. Like, oh shoot, I left my intestines at home. Like, I have less mass, right? It's not what happens. All right, volume, I think we all have a pretty good idea about that. It takes up space. So, fire does not have mass. It doesn't. Well, if you kept this going, it would weigh less. Yes, the fuel would be reacting with the oxygen, and the evidence is that fire. Yeah, but that, that's different, right? Uh, so chemicals are matter. Uh, time, time is not matter, right? It's not like you're like, oh, what time is it? Ah, it feels late. It's heavy. It's 10 o'clock. That's a lot heavier than quarter to nine. Uh, right? It's not like that. So um, just understand kind of the difference between that. So let's ask a question here. Can it be separated? So if I said something could be separated, you're looking at it and go, well, you know what? I can break that up into smaller pieces. If I can then what we call that is a mixture. Just make sure that you see the definition to that word. The definitions are already there though. Right? It's made up of one or more, sorry, made up of more than one element or compound that can be chemically bonded. Didn't want to make you have to write all this stuff. Right? So that's a mixture. If I can't break it up, then it's basically one thing. And if it's one thing, I'm going to view it as, we're going to call it a pure substance. Which my words are way. <laughs> Bless you. And a pure substance is matter with constant composition and distinct chemical properties. Like it's that thing only. So it's very unique. Can't break it up. So I was looking at this last night. And I was thinking to myself, man, you know, like I'd love to do something that was a little out of the box thinking with uh, mixtures and substances. And, I, and my mind went instantly to food. It just went to food. I'm like, you know what? You can talk a lot about this stuff with food because normally in chemistry we can't talk about food because we're dealing with chemicals. So. Um, I went off of this question right here. Is the composition uniform, yes or no? So I started looking at things, and, and uh, the first thing I thought of is I went in my fridge and I, and I brought out this orange juice, or apple juice. Hey, totally twinning. So I poured it, and do you have to shake apple juice? No. no. Some of you are like, wait, do you? No. You can do it, sure, go for it, but you don't actually have to shake it. And I looked at it, and that looks pretty gar darn pure, right? Like it, but it, it isn't just one thing. There are multiple things in there. I looked at the ingredients. There's other things. And... 
It's pretty good. So it was all uniform. It looked like one thing. So I looked it up, and it was homogeneous or homogeneous. You can say it either way. So I thought to myself, well, I looked at my pantry. I'm like, what else do I have that's homogeneous? <laughs> so I found this vanilla snack pack. And I'm like, well, you know, sometimes containers can be deceiving, right? You open it up, and it's totally something different. So I needed to open it up. And I looked, and it still looks like all one thing. But that's not good enough for me. I'm pretty thorough. So I had to check it out. I'm right in there. <laughs> So that is definitely a mixture with uniform composition throughout. So okay, I'm like, okay, okay. So I found something that's all the same. But then I went in my pantry, and I was very confused. I found this. I'm like, well, that looks the same, but okay, that looks different, but that looks the same. So is each layer homogeneous, but the whole thing not? Or is this just a cool container and when I open it up, it's gonna be like, you know, purple and nothing's in there. So I started looking that up and I found out that is a heterogeneous mixture, I think. So it's a mixture with non-uniform composition, but you know what? I just said, I'm very thorough. I need to make sure. So I opened it up and I was a little confused because it just looked like chocolate. So, you know, sometimes I'm delicate and when I am, gotta put the pinky out, right? So I'm eating it and and I saw that, but I got impatient. So I went in there a little bit more, and all of a sudden, I started seeing this vanilla. <laughs> the next thing I know, <laughs> that was different. So that's definitely a homogeneous mixture. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, <sighs> when, when it's all the same, it's homogeneous throughout. Each layer might have been homogeneous, but that sample was definitely heterogeneous. So I brought it up a little. And my kids are going to go trick-or-treating soon, and I found these Reese's, Pieces, uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Big Cups. And I'm like, whoa, what is that? So I thought to myself, well, let's check that out. So I looked at it, and this chocolate looks like all one thing. And you know what? I don't remember. I haven't had one in a while, so I had to take a bite. I'm like, oh my god. That is a heterogeneous mixture. But I had to make sure because it could have just been one bite. Mm -hmm. Of course. We know I need to wash it down. And now I had that. So I found this. And I know you, but chocolate and orange juice is such a good sequence to have, right? So, do you have to shake orange juice? Yeah. Okay. Now, I did something I never did before. What does that say? I call. You point to him. If I hate one thing in this world, it's the cardinals. Second thing, <laughs> high pulp. My wife once I not just bought high pulp. It said I kid you. I didn't know what brand it was. It said a whole lot of pulp. And I was looking for the divorce papers that she attached to the uh, box. I'm like, there it is. So I opened it up this morning. <laughs> I mean, when you drink, it's like a jack-o'-lantern afterwards. Look at how gross this is. Watch. This is not frozen. Wait, oh, it's gone, gone. I, I drank it up. I had to chew. I pushed it up last hour, and this hot pulp came out on the top. I did you not. Well, let's pour it. Let's see if we can get some. Oh, oh, what was that? It was like a cork of pulp. This is going to be good. So, after I chewed my pole, I realized I was heterogeneous. So, sorry. I got, I got, this right. So finally, I'm like, okay, I think I broke the code. And I found a Hershey bar. I'm like, you know what, simple. Simple, simple ideas. I open this up, and I, I'm just like shaking. It's <laughs> <laughs> so many holes. It is the pole. What is this? Well, I know it though. Is it hetero or homogeneous? If I bet into it, it kind of looks all the same, doesn't it? So that seems like actually homogeneous. So I'm like, wait a minute. This is homogeneous. And this vanilla pudding was homogeneous. 
I'm like, does one homogenous thing and another homogenous thing? Is that still homogenous? Um, and we're like, it's not. It's a heterogeneous. <laughs> So, those are some things I was singing about last night. So let's talk about um, some other things we could write. I'd write the words, okay? So underneath, put some examples. Milk. Milk. Uh, Gatorade. And apple juice. Gatorade is just salt water, but it's all uh, mixed up into a solution. It's all dissolved. If you drink... Okay. Um, <laughs> crisis averted. If you drink Gatorade next time think about salt, you'll actually taste the salt. Uh, I can't think of another uh, food uh, <coughs> product like when I'm golfing and I'll ask, hey, do you have a Gatorade? And then they'll say, what color? Not like what flavor. Like, they, like if you ask, like, yeah, I like a juice, they wouldn't be like, what color juice would you like? I think it's a weird thing that our whole society does it too. Oh, I'll have blue. Um, heterogeneous, some examples of that. Uh, I, you may not want to write all those down. For surely I'd write orange juice, OJ, and I'd write a salad. I think that's a good example. A salad, you can definitely see the differences, right? <clears throat> all right, the other side. The question is, can it be decomposed by ordinary chemical means? Meaning, with a little chemistry, can you break that thing down into separate parts? If you can, what we call it is a compound. Again, please be sure you have the word linked to the definition. So you never have to figure that out later. All right. Let's talk about examples of that right away. So I, I'm going to write them down for you. So what does a compound look like? Like you can have salt. Well, it's NaCl. Water, H2O. It's more than one element. That's all. So if it's not a compound and it can't be broken up, then what we call it is just simply an element. Can an element, this is the one thing that you guys will probably make a mistake on, so I'm going to make a list. Uh, this is charcoal, which is like carbon, neon signs, and gold. I'm going to add one, actually. How do I do this? Move up or down? Oh, this is great. So I'm gonna, just going to write it right here. Like you got carbon, you got gold, but then I'm going to add a different one, like oxygen. Well, you put two there, though, but it's only oxygen. So when you're breathing oxygen, you're actually breathing O2. That is not a compound. Okay, that is still a pure element. Uh, it's all the same. So those are the ones that if you ever have to classify, those are the types of matter that will be reacting in a chemical reaction. Now, what we're going to do is talk about some of the different parts of uh, reactions and ways to describe them. So the first part today is change. Okay, there's change. You guys are going through change every day in your lives. There's different things that will change. There's change that we can control. There's change that we can't control. And it's all about being able to recognize, is it, in this case, physical or chemical change, okay? I think you have more of an idea of this than you think you do. Like, if you change yourself physically, what could you do? You could cut your hair, you could dye your hair, you could lift weights, you could have a tattoo, you could uh, sun tan or spray or bake or burn or fill in the blank on that. Um, but that would change your physical appearance, right? It's not changing anything inside you. And I don't want to, oh, well, it gives me more confidence when I have it. Okay, forget that part. Uh, besides that, it doesn't change who you are. Like, you still have your sense of humor, you still have your, your intellect, all that stuff. So, a physical change, if I can do this, sorry, it's a little small, but it's just a rearrangement of substances, molecules. That's it. Let me give you an example. So I have this test tube. If I do this, I didn't magically all of a sudden make it into that, right? It, uh, yeah, I can't even find where it is. Let's just pretend this was it. Um, there's a lot of stuff in there. Uh, it, it shouldn't surprise you that that's just glass. It's not like, wait, it didn't turn into, you know, like a gecko or something like that? You're not a wizard? Uh, you know, like broken glass is just still glass. It just looks a little different. So, 
That would be an example of a physical change. On uh, paper, if I rip it in half, you shouldn't be like, wait, now what? I'm like, no, it's just I ripped it. I changed some property, even if you don't realize it, but I didn't do anything to it. So I think the best example, well, here, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, a chemical change results in the formation of a new substance. That's what chemistry is, making new substances. If you start with the exact same stuff and you end with it, it doesn't do anything. There's, there's no chemistry there. So if I took that same paper and I burned it, for some of you, the, the pyros in the room, now your dark board showing up right now. Burn. <laughs> um, it's changing. It is reacting with oxygen, and that paper that's burning, sorry, there'll be more fire there. Um, that end is different. It has a different texture, it has a different color, it's not the same substance anymore, right? For some of you, you're done already. Now you just hear weird voices in your head. Just saying other things. So let's, let's ignore them. Oh, they're going into my pudding. <laughs> <laughs> I won't eat that anyway anymore. Man, I was still hungry. Shoot! Um, so, I have um, a couple examples, like uh, melting. All right, crushing a can. Uh, this one, uh, fire. Don't write this right in the middle, we're writing something here. Digestion, so we're just doing some examples. I think we all agree what goes in doesn't come out the same way, with enough said. Um, so that's a chemical change. So the biggest hint I can give you is um, with a physical change, if you can remember P and P, physical, for phase change. So what is a phase? A phase is a liquid, solid, liquid, and a gas. And we're going to talk about that in the next couple things. So they're all going to link. So if I am changing, like, like melting, right? a lot of people get the boiling part wrong. Oh, I'm boiling something. Oh, it's a chemical change. It's going from a liquid to liquid vapor. It's still water. So the chemical uh, formula is still exactly the same. So let's talk about a couple examples here of properties. So on the bottom, I've written somewhere. There you are. Some properties, like a change, great. A and it's already written there. But a property can be measured uh, by just basically observing it. So again, I can observe right now your eye color, your hair color, your height, your weight, all that. But I can't look at you and go, you know, you're really caring, or you're a jerk, or you're sarcastic, or you're sweet, or you're funny, or you're really not funny. Like, and please don't be like, oh my god, he pointed at me for that. <laughs> oh, my son said that you said you're the jerk. <laughs> no, I said he wasn't funny. <laughs> uh, but those are things that I can observe. So when I'm looking at this paper, what's something, the easiest thing you can observe right now? Blue. Blue. I love how I, I always love when someone says something really random. But uh, yeah, it's blue. So color. Let's just make a list. These are some examples of chemical properties that are physical properties. The mass. You could get the mass by not doing much with that. You could get the density, uh, volume, and then these last two I want to talk about. Just write M, P, and B, P. It means boiling point and melting point. In chemistry, we talk about these two things a lot. Um, I could just see that. I could put water in a pot and boil it. I could put water outside or in a fridge and I could see when it's going to freeze. I always said it'd be freezer, not a fridge. But chemical property, I have to interact. So I have to interact with you to know if you're funny or if you're a jerk or if you're sarcastic. Right? I have to actually have an interaction. A chemical has to interact with another uh, chemical for a chemical property to show itself. So I have a really cool example to show you with that, but first, let's write a few of these. So, for example, um, I could look at uh, this liquid. And you could be like, oh, what is it? I don't know. Is it dangerous? I don't know. Let's find out. And then you drink it. And then we find out. It interacted. Someone, someone had to do that. Like, I, my favorite thing on a periodic table is when the taste, there's tastes written underneath all these elements. And it's like, well, wait, what? People tasted them. I mean, no one would know chocolate was chocolate uh, unless if you tasted it. My, one of my favorite lines from a comedian once said, the bravest person in the entire world ever was the first person 
that ate the egg that they saw go come out of the chicken. Be like, you know what? I'm going to eat that. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> Genius. So, um, toxicity. And that's not so Yeah, that actually it was. If something's toxic, you don't really know unless it interacts. Well, what if it's on my skin? Okay, fine, but that's still interacting. Um, I'm allergic to walnuts. Well, uh, I had to find out that the hard way, like multiple times. Uh, you know, it just is what it is. Flammability. And I'm just going to put chemical stability, just in general. Is something stable or not? I mean, we could, we could fill in the blank with what that means. I'm getting snack packs. <laughs> that is a thing, apparently. <laughs> so, <laughs> see, I'm, I'm like a um, a late night a gas station where you don't keep a lot of money on you. Like, there are no more snack packs in here, so I can't get like raided by all of you. Like, this is it. So it was it was a safety uh, concern of mine my protection from all of you. Okay, let's see if, whoops, if this can work. Oh, there we go. Okay, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna light this candle that may not light because the wick is screwed up. Hot, hot. <laughs> All right, I brought extra can. Okay. Gotta have a blowtorch, right? All right, there are uh, ga um, garage fires that happen all the time in the United States. People have towels or rags that are soaked in flammable liquids or they have flammable liquids that are just open and then they're working on a car they're over here the, the liquids cars over here uh, sparks happen in an engine or whatever and fire starts well how is that possible I had my flammable liquid far away so what I'm going to try to prove today in lab we have to make sure when we have a flammable liquid that we keep it away I'm going to take this bottle I'm going to pour it sideways without trying I wasn't very successful last hour um, without trying to pour the liquid down, I'm going to try to pour the gas down the ramp, and you're going to see what happens, okay? intense <laughs> thank you I would have been sitting there for like three minutes <laughs> God. one more so I'm not pouring liquid it's just the gas oh that was in the box all right so <laughs> So it definitely shows the flammability of, of a substance and the fact that the vapors can still cause a fire. And that, that happens a lot. So that's why you always need to put it away right away because the flammable liquids are out there. And you don't want that to jump, basically. All right, let's finish up. So that's chemical and physical uh, changes. All right, we're going to go to, um, you've probably heard these terms before. We have two left. Let's talk about energy. So exo and endothermic. First off, let's just write this right away. It feels hot or it feels cold. Write that small. Don't write it very big. We have other things to write. So what I'm about to do is I'm going to hand these out. 
under the impression that you are going to be cool about this. So let me talk about this one. You know, drink. Okay, this is a this is um, uh, uh, methanol. Uh, it's a very flammable liquid. Uh, you don't pass it on and assume that the dropper is attached, okay? Always grab it by the bottle, because the last person might not have screwed it back on. What you're going to do is you're going to squeeze the bottle in, okay? Put one or two drops on your hand, okay? You can rub it in or you can, uh, I would just do it like that, and then blow across it, okay? And sense what it is. You don't want to do it? You don't have to do it. I'm not hurting you though. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand these out. If you get one, I'm handing one on the hand and then one in the middle. So the people in the middle, once you get the other one, don't keep passing that new one down. Whoa! <laughs> So, pass them either way. One or two drops and then pass it on. You don't need the bottle after you put it on your skin. We're not tasting it. We're not licking it. We're not doing anything of that. And then blow on it. Blow across it. You don't feel anything, you didn't put enough on. Why are you sniffing it? Okay, so as we're doing that, guys, EXO. <laughs> EXO and ENDO are really important parts of these words. EXO, like exits. Endo, you can kind of think of going in. All right? Stay with me, guys. This is not something that you need to be that distracted on. So, when something's exothermic, it releases energy to the environment. Releases, the biggest word of all. It releases the energy to the environment. So, hopefully, you would be able to say, okay, fine. So, it, it would be the opposite for endo. It absorbs energy from the environment. So it goes into the system, or it goes out of the system. All right, so let's talk about that a little bit. Um, what did you experience? It was cold or hot? Cold. It better be. If you're like, it was really hot, then we actually might be able to uh, <laughs> it burns. Um, or you lit it on fire. Hey, that was, never happened yet, but I'm not saying uh, So then that was clearly what? An endothermic reaction. Okay, so let's talk about that. You blew on a liquid, and then it disappeared, so it became a gas. If you're like, it vanished. This isn't magic. You didn't sign up for magic uh, class. So it went from a liquid to a gas. This is just one example. I want you to think about atoms here for a moment. And we haven't gotten into all this, but if you have a solid that's locked in place, a liquid, well, this is kind of a solid liquid. Let's talk about real liquids. <laughs> a liquid that has that motion, so it's a little more free, meaning that the atoms have a little more energy. This is my salsa dance. And then all of a sudden, if you have a gas, it's going really fast because they break apart and they're not uh, attracted to each other. They're traveling really fast. So if I'm going from a liquid to a gas, it has to gain energy to make that jump, to go from here to like this. So when I get out of the shower, I'm cold because I am uh, eva the, the liquid's evaporating. So evaporation, I think I have a picture here. I thought I had a picture here. Um, baking is one example, but the other one I wanted to say was evaporation. 
Don't dry in the middle. Don't write in the middle here because we have other things to write. Evaporation. That's a liquid to a, a, a gas. You are gaining. Why are you cold after the shower? Because that layer of liquid is jumping to gaseous state. Where is it getting that energy? Stealing it from you. That's why it takes it from you. And it goes into its system. The greatest, most beautiful system, I think, one of, not the most, but one of the ones that we have that we all probably hate is the ability to sweat. We are, have the ability to pump out a thin film of liquid on our skin, and then when that evaporates, it takes our heat from our body and it cools us down. And, and that, that's all about chemistry and, and energy going in or out to create that new state. So exothermic, what's weird about that, obviously you can write bomb. I mean, that's obvious, or fireworks or anything like that. But um, if I'm going exothermic, uh, I could do something simple like this. If I go from a liquid to a uh, solid, I'm freezing. What's weird about that? Oh, I'm freezing, so it's cold. And why are you saying that it feels hot? Well, it's losing its energy. So where's its energy going out? It's leaving it. So you'd actually feel heat, but we don't quite feel it like that. A uh, refrigerator, though, you feel heat from the backside. It's producing cold air in the middle. A little more complicated with that, but uh, it's the opposite way. So uh, I'm going to write a bomb, and then you can write freezing. Freezing is another good example. So, I have a cool thing up front. I just don't think I wrote this one thing. Yes, I did, okay. So, in the middle here, we're, we're getting close to being done here. Oh, shoot. Ah, I turned this off. We will let that run. We will come back to it. <laughs> Give it about three minutes. Uh, I need that. Yeah, it's working right now. So, we'll leave that. We'll come back. We're going to draw something right here. Let's finish up with the bottom one. So let's talk about properties. This one's a little more abstract. Students struggle with this a little bit. Um, extensive and intensive. So um, let's underline that before I even get into it. Extensive, intensive. So um, like external, you can kind of think of it that way, and internal. So what these are, it's very generic. This is like an umbrella of items. So if I just look at this piece of paper, and I rip it in half, again, well not in half, I take a little piece. What's something that you can observe that didn't change when I ripped it? The color, the color again. Wow, it was so good. So it doesn't matter, I mean, I hope this isn't a surprise when I keep that. Like, what, it's still blue, what? <laughs> of course, it's still blue. Yeah, it's still blue, it tastes blue too. Um, it's blue. So that would be an example of what we call an intensive property. It doesn't matter how much you have of it. Okay, it's always going to be that that item, or that I mean, sorry, that measurement. So this is always going to be blue. But is there anything that you can measure, anything at all, that if I did that, that this would be different than this right now? There's multiple answers. Mass. Mass. What, if I weigh this, would they be different? That's a good one. So that is what we call an extensive property. The, just the word mass is an extensive property. So I have a couple examples that we can write, and that's one of them, mass. A uh, mass, um, height, volume. Right, these are all things, it doesn't work perfectly, but if you measure them, if you make a measurement a lot of times, it usually will change the, the classic measurements we make because they are extensive properties. But what's an intensive property? Well, I picked a really good example in general is a diamond. A diamond has a lot of things that we could talk about with it. One, the color would always be the color. Uh, the density is always going to be the same. The hardness. Things that will never change. And we're going to do some on our um, examples as well. Uh, is that liquid, if I took a little bit or a lot, would it still be flammable? Probably be the same amount of being flammability. I obviously, it wouldn't burn as long. But that, that's not same thing. It's not like you take a drop, you go, oh, it doesn't burn at all now. If you take a lot of it, it does. Uh, so that's kind of how that one is. So that, that we'll, we'll look at that in our homework. The homework's going to be so easy. You guys are probably going to finish it way early. It's not due until next Wednesday. And some of you will finish it by tomorrow. We gave you way too much time. But we're not going to change it now. All right. So I'm going to give this as much time as possible. So we're going to write it here first. I have the sun. Here's my sun. And what I have is I have a solar panel. And then there are two cells here. This is a fuel cell. And this has been a huge thing for our society for probably 20 years now, trying to find 
means to make cheaper fuel, right, uh, for our vehicles without having it at such great costs to us. So what happens is energy, we're going to use it as E, draw an arrow from the sun to the solar panel, goes into this. And then what I have is I have two columns, and I don't know if it's working, two columns of water right here. And what's happening, there should be water up here now, and there should be gas in here. And if I hold this up, I think you guys can see some bubbles if I push it. A couple of bubbles rising. If you can't see it, there's bubbles that are coming out of here. This cell is taking the energy from um, the solar panel and it's, and it's attacking the water. So what it's doing, and I'm actually going to draw this up a little bit. You guys probably have more room than I do. It's attacking the water and it's breaking it apart. So those two bubbles are actually making oxygen and hydrogen gas. So if I put energy in, what is that? Exorithothermic. I'm putting it in. So it's endothermic, right? In baking, you don't put the cake on the counter and go, what are you doing? I'm baking a cake. It's going to be done in a half an hour. It's good. I mean, those jello cakes actually do that. But you got to put it in the oven, and it gives itself, or the oven gives the energy. So the sun's going to give us our energy. So this is the endothermic reaction. Okay, and then what's cool about this is when I open this up, I'm going to allow the two gas uh, molecules to come back into the second cell right here, and then little water droplets come out of here, and it's going to remake water. And by remaking water, by making bonds, so I'm going to make water again, it's going to release that energy. So the energy is going to come out. And when I open this up, unfortunately, I did not. Uh, it's already going. It starts it up. I didn't even really open it up yet. And it can start running the. It's not because of the lamp per se. It's because of the bonds being broken and then bonds being reformed again. And it's causing this to run. Now, obviously, this is not the most exciting of all things that you could see. But it breaks the water up here puts the gases up here, and then the gases come back down in this tube, comes into this cell, comes back together as water, and voila, I have basically free energy because I got it from the sun. I didn't have to produce it some other way. Like a plug-in car, you still got to plug it in. You got to get that energy somewhere else, right? So this way, we actually cause it to gain that energy uh, from a source that we didn't have to produce ourselves. All right, what I want to do is take a look a little bit at uh, a couple homework problems. So we're not done yet, but we have plenty of time. We're doing really well. So, oops, sorry. Pass one down, take one, pass it down. Take one down. Sorry. Oh, thank you. Get one, get your name on it. We're going to go through some problems, so don't just make assumptions right now. Okay, so flip it to the back. So number five talks about physical and chemical changes. Reminder, a physical change means that it's still the same thing. So if you knew the formula, like it's still salt, or it's still water, it's still this or that, then it's a physical. If it's something new, then it's a chemical. So I have boiling water, OK? Is that a physical or chemical change? It is a physical. Good. It is a physical. If you're like, oh, it's chemical. If you look at your notes, above the word physical, I actually wrote phase change. That is a phase change. If you don't know where you're at, I literally wrote the letters right here. So this is a P. You're going to notice right away how we are asking you to do this. Is you're putting certain letters down. 
So on A through I there, you just have to ask yourself, is that thing changing into something new? Now, some of you, you could argue, okay? For example, mowing the lawn. You could say, well, when it first happens, yes, but after 10, 20 minutes, an hour, a day, then is that something different? Am I talking about the motor? Am I talking... Like, you could argue a lot of things. Try not to look into it too deeply. For that one, for example, I'm thinking about literally the blade of grass getting clipped. That's what I'm thinking about. All right, jump into six, though. Stay with me on these just so you're, I'm trying to keep your head in the right space here. Um, if I look at milk, milk would be what? M or T? So M for homogeneous, T for heterogeneous. Is it all one thing? Yes. Yes, you, good question for you to ask. Do you have to shake it? If you're shaking your milk, you need to throw it away. It's not good. Or that's your cottage cheese and you just don't know how to identify the difference between them. Um, paint. What do you have to do with paint? Stir. You got to stir it, right? You have to. It, it settles out. So that means it must be a heterogeneous mixture, right? Has to be. You can find the problems. I don't have letters on each of these. You can, you can find them. Uh, number eight. I thought this one was a little harder, so I want to talk about it. Indicate whether each is an exo or endothermic. So here's an important thing, frost. What I would do if you're not sure, <coughs> write down S's, L's, and G's. So what is frost? It, what is it? it? It ends as a solid. It came from basically dew, right? Or moisture. So it's an L. That's an L. Liquid to a solid. Think about energy. Can we, we just kind of introduced it today. But a liquid has a certain amount of energy and then a solid has less. So if I have less than I started with, what does that mean? It's a exothermic. It released it. It's like, wait, wait, what? Endo, you would have more. Exo, you have less. So as you're going towards the solids, in any order, as you're heading towards the solids, you're always releasing it. When you're going towards the gas, you're always gaining it. So this, what do I have? What are my options? Oh, uh, X or N. So that would be um, X for endo. Uh, number nine. An extensive or intensive. Okay, I try to do one that we haven't really talked about yet. Actually, two of them. Boiling point. I, I think we'd all agree if I had a thimble of water and a bathtub of water, that the thimble would boil faster, like sooner, right? But at what temperature would they boil at? They both would boil at 100 degrees Celsius or 212 Fahrenheit. Both. Just one takes longer. So it doesn't matter how much I have, and I'm just jumping right into that one. This doesn't matter how much. If it doesn't matter how much, it is intensive. The second one is trying to show malleability. It's a fancy way of saying that something's bendable. Um, I think the actual technical definition is the ability to be pressed into sheets. But um, you know, we always do that with gold medals. Although it's all fake because we're not trying to actually see through gold. Uh, so if I have a little bit or a lot of it, it's still going to be as, as bendable or as not, as malleable or not as malleable. It's like as flammable or as not, uh, as not flammable as it's going to be, it is still an intensive property. So what you need to do is look at those and wonder, okay, if I cut it in half, will it be more or less? So what's the first one that's actually in extensive on that? Hmm? No? On that whole problem, what's the first one that's extensive? Length, the first one. Trick question. If I cut the length in half, it's half the length. That's extensive. It matters how much I have of it. Um, number 10, uh, oil and water. So we're doing element, compound, homogeneous, or heterogeneous. Well, I look at that picture. Clearly, I have more than one thing, so that's not pure. So now i got to go to uh, homo or hetero, and clearly that is different, right? So those are not the same. So that is a heterogeneous mixture. All right, hetero means different, homo means the same. All right, so flip the sheet back over. I have one more thing to show you. We're gonna do four problems, because it has confused students in the past. Okay, so your job is to say pure element, pure compound, homogeneous or heterogeneous mixture. So first, if you look at it and it's all the same thing, it's gonna be a pure something. If you have differences, it's a mixture. But, unfortunately, these pictures have confused everyone in the past. So, let's just take a look at number seven. If you look at that and go, well, there's two white ones connected to each other. Yes, but it's all white uh, on each one, which actually is not the reason why it's gonna be the answer I'm gonna say uh, completely. The fact that these are all the same, that's first off why it's pure. Okay, now, if that was a white and a black one, 
then I have two different elements. So then it would be a pure compound. But because they're all the same element, that is a pure element. Go to number 11. Do you see a difference from one set of atoms to another? They're all the same, right? So that is pure. But there are different elements within each one, right? So this is a compound. Hope that already kind of makes some sense. Now, let's, let's step it up a notch here. If I look at number eight, you see differences, right? I mean, look, you have single white ones, you have single black ones, you have ones with two whites and a black. So that is a mixture. So now this one, you and your friend might be looking at the exact same photo and you say one thing and the other one, and your friend says the other, and you probably both could convince someone else of your position. What I would just suggest is take a step back and go, does that look pretty evenly mixed up? So in this case, I guess I'm going to try to steer you towards how I see this. I see those three black ones all by themselves, like with nothing else there, and I don't feel like then that's evenly distributed and, and mixed up. So to me, that's not a, a, an even uniform mixture. So I'm going to say that that is a heterogeneous. Now, if you interpret that differently, you could probably convince me. But that's how I interpret that. So um, can you, you find, there's, there's a, there, what, can you find a homogenous one on these six? my last one I was going to do. Which one do you think is a mixture, but it looks decently even? Now, if you're counting, well, uh, there's four on this side of the paper, and there's five on this side, and wow, you have done way too much. It's an eye test. What, what number? 9, 10, or 12 is homogenous. 12. 10, 9, Yeah, I, didn't, I wasn't even looking at that one. Yeah, I, I, I kind of see a little bit of everything all mixed up. That's definitely a good one. Good. I'm not saying that what other people are yelling at isn't right either. So, that's the whole point of that. Um, if you look at this, not that much work, right? It's not doing until next Wednesday. Uh, I fully expect these handed in much earlier than that. I, I'd be shocked if, I'm, if the majority of these aren't handed in before Wednesday. Finish it up, get it handed in. Final items. <coughs> Try to get your uh, lab safety contract signed by tomorrow. If you have it today, we're not going to let you just go. You can just hold on to it. You can hand it in tomorrow if you want. But it's got to have your parent's signature uh, and your signature on that and your name printed. So make sure that is all taken care of. We will be finishing up with some lab safety stuff tomorrow, and then you are done for the week. It's a nice little pocket of time that you don't have a ton of crazy homework uh, because of just the nature of the material. Yeah. So uh, you can work on it. we still got another six minutes or so. And thank you. That's it. I, I don't know if I should go through I'm going to go through all.